United States Department of Agriculture. A little while ago, my wife and I were out to dinner. And when the waitress brought our food to the table, she had a cheeseburger and fries in one hand and a salad in the other. And she started to give me the cheeseburger. And I said, oh, no, 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 I, I actually ordered the salad. And she said, oh, well, it's nice to see a salad guy. I am a salad guy. I'm all about the leafy greens. And I like lots of things on my salads. Tomatoes, radishes, grilled chicken, grilled salmon when I'm feeling fancy, even anchovies on a Caesar salad. But you know what I don't like on my salad? Salmonella, E. coli, listeria, cyclosporia chiatinensis, or any other kind of foodborne pathogen. Every year, more than 48 million Americans are made sick by something that they ate. 128,000 Americans are made so ill that they have to be hospitalized. And every year, more than 3,000 Americans die from foodborne illness. Unfortunately, fresh and fresh cut fruits and vegetables, including salads and leafy greens, are one of the leading vectors for foodborne illness. Now, the fresh produce industry is doing the best they can, but they need new approaches to food safety. I'm Dr. Brendan Namira a research microbiologist for the USDA's Agricultural Research Service, and I'm developing one of those new approaches. This revolutionary technology called cold plasma is one of the most exciting new food processing technologies in recent years. So what is cold plasma and how does it work? Well, you start with some very carefully designed equipment and you apply electricity of just the right voltage and just the right pulse frequency, and that you turn plain old air into a sanitizing spray that is remarkably effective at inactivating pathogenic bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi. Conventional sanitizers use chemicals like sodium hypochlorite, peroxyacetic acid, ammonium ions, and other compounds. But cold plasma just uses air, water, and electricity. There's no sanitizing chemicals applied up front and no residues to wash off afterward. And the cold plasma equipment in my lab uses less electricity than a toaster oven. It's clean and green, it's efficient and it's flexible. Cold plasma can be applied as a dry process for low moisture foods like seeds, nuts, and powdered foods, which would be damaged by liquid sanitizers. Or cold plasma can be used as a moist process for fresh and fresh cut fruits and vegetables. Well, a big question is how well does it work? In my lab at the USDA, my colleagues and I made up some test salads from leafy greens and tomatoes and inoculated it with different human pathogens. We then applied cold plasma to those inoculated salads in a couple of different ways. And the end result, we killed more than 99.9% .9 of the E. coli and listeria on those mixed salads. We sprayed cold plasma onto inoculated oranges and killed 99.97% of salmonella on the fruit. We applied cold plasma to inoculated blueberries and killed 99.98% of viruses. It's not bad. We know this new treatment works great on its own, but we're finding that we can also combine cold plasma with other processes to make them work even better. Even a quick treatment with cold plasma, I'm talking just a few seconds, injures pathogens on foods, making them more susceptible to conventional sanitizers, and physical processes like high intensity light. I've been working on this at the USDA for about 20 years, developing it for, from some pretty clunky early prototypes. Back in those first days when we were trying to get this research program off the ground, we were microbiologists and engineers who knew this was a good idea, but we hadn't yet secured the support to purchase the necessary high voltage plasma generation and manipulation equipment. So we got clever. We started with basic principles of physics and biology and used our technical expertise to build the equipment from scratch. To get the high voltage needed to generate dense ionized plasmas, we went to a junkyard and we pulled some ignition coils from old pickup trucks, the kind of coils that drive big spark plugs. We needed dielectric barrier materials that would change the flow of electrons within the plasma. So we went to a garage sale and we got some old used storm windows, the kind with thick, heavy glass. And to make the distributed field corona electrodes that would generate and create and sustain the plasma discharges, we went to the hardware store 
for a box of nails and a roll of conductive aluminum tape, the kind used to repair refrigerators. We built that first prototype for about a hundred bucks. And here it is. To be honest, most of the early equipment looked like the kind of thing that would be right at home in Dr. Frankenstein's lab. But it was all designed and built based on clear, logical scientific principles that combined plasma physics, high voltage electrical engineering, and food microbiology. And since those early days, we, based on the results that we've gotten in my lab, my colleagues and I have developed the technology in almost every way, making it work better, faster, and cheaper. As a USDA research project team, we've attracted substantial investment in our cold plasma research and development. And we've led dozens of collaborations with companies and universities all over the US and around the world. They see the potential for cold plasma to be used commercially to make food safer. Safer by treating fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds and spices directly with cold plasma to kill pathogenic bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Make food safer by injecting cold plasma into wash water and irrigation water to kill suspended pathogens and reduce cross-contamination. Make food safer by applying cold plasma to conveyor belts, processing equipment, and other food contact surfaces to keep foods from becoming contaminated in the first place. Over the years, our pioneering work in cold plasma as a novel, effective food safety technology has brought lots of visiting scientists, postdocs, and students to our USDA research facility. We've paved the way for the hundreds of labs around the world who are building on our non-thermal processing work and creating the next generation of cold plasma technologies. I'm proud of my research team at the USDA for how we've become recognized as a world-leading institution for cold plasma and other non-thermal food, food safety interventions, bringing to life advanced food processing technologies to help keep Americans safe from foodborne illness. I'm Dr. Brendan Namira. I'm a salad guy, and I'm working on cold plasma to make all our salads as healthy and as safe as they can be. USDA is an equal opportunity provider, employer, and lender.